Hello everyone. This video would focus on solving word problems involving inverse variation and this is the second part. Before we go further, please feel free to check out the description below for the link of the other series of topics related to inverse variation. Before we go over this word problem that we have right here, let's have a review on the basic information about inverse variation. So what is inverse variation? To better understand this type of variation, let's look at variable A and variable B. For inverse variation, if variable A increases, variable B will decrease. Now notice the direction of the arrow. The other one goes up while the other variable goes down. On the other hand, if variable A decreases, then variable B will increase. And again, notice the direction of the arrow. The direction of the arrow goes in opposite direction. And that is what we mean by inverse variation. So whenever we see two variables are inversely proportional with each other, we can say that A varies inversely as B or A is inversely proportional to B. Now let's look at some real life examples of inverse variation. Speed and time are inversely proportional to each other, which means that if a car moves at a faster speed, then it takes less time to get to its destination. On the other hand, if a car moves at a slower speed, then it takes more time to get to the same destination. And that makes speed and time inversely proportional to each other. Now let's look at another example. Number of trees and air pollution on a given area are inversely proportional to each other, which means that if the area has a greater number of trees or if it has more trees, then it has less pollution. On the other hand, if that same area has less number of trees, then it will have a more probability of getting air pollution. And so again, these two are inversely proportional to each other. Now let's look at another example. Practice and number of mistakes are inversely proportional to each other, which means that the more we practice, the less mistakes we commit. On the other hand, the less we practice, the more mistakes or we get more probability of committing mistakes if we have less practice. So these two are inversely proportional to each other. We also remember that the general equation for an inverse variation is y equals k over x, where our k is called the proportionality constant, so that we can go ahead and say that if we wanted to determine the constant of variation or the proportionality constant k for an inverse variation, we go ahead and we can rearrange this equation as k equals xy. Okay, going back to the problem right here, the time required to do a job varies inversely as the number of people working. It takes five hours for six people to build a park well. How long will it take 10 people to complete the same job? So we were going to define the variables involved here. First, we have time and the number of people. So we're going to assign a um, variable to these two quantities. So we're going to let T to represent the time and number of people to represent uh, to be represented as P. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. It says here that time required to do the job varies inversely as the number of people. So we can go ahead and represent this as T is equal to K over P where our k here is the constant of variation. So we go ahead and plug the values in. So it says that it takes five hours for six people to build the park well. So this will be, um, our t here will be five and our k will be, um, is missing, we don't know what it is. 
and the number of people would be six. So I'm gonna put six right here. So we're supposed to determine the value for K. To do that, we're gonna multiply both sides by six. We're gonna multiply this by six, so we can cross this out. We are left with K is equal to 30. So this is our proportionality um, constant. So what we do next is we're not done yet because we're supposed to um, determine the time it takes to complete, um, the time it takes for 10 people to complete the same job. So what are we going to do is we are going to write the equation. So instead of um, writing T equals K over P, we're going to plug in this 30 back into the K. So then our working equation would be T is equal to 30 over P. So this is our working equation. Since we say that we're supposed to determine the time it takes for 10 people to complete the job, so we can go ahead and say T is missing when number of people is 10. So what we do is we will use the same equation that we have here, but this time around we will put 10 for P. So this comes out T equals 30 over 10 and that gives us three so it takes three hours to complete the same job if there were 10 people working now let's move on to the next example at this time i would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own and when you're done and pause it and check your answer Okay, so we go over the problem here. The wavelength of a radio wave varies inversely as its frequency. A wave with a frequency of 2400 kilohertz has a length of 150 meters. What is the length of a wave with frequency of 400 kilohertz? So there are two quantities here. The first one is the wavelength and the other one is the frequency. So we go ahead and assign W for wavelength and F for frequency. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that um, up here. Okay, since we say that wavelength varies inversely as frequency, we can go ahead and write that as W equals K over F because it is in because they're both quantities are inversely proportional to each other. And we are given that the frequency um, is 2000. 400, it will have a length of, or the wavelength would be 150 meters. So I can go ahead and plug that in here. So the wavelength is 150 when the frequency is 2400. So then we go ahead and solve for K. We can do that by multiplying both sides by uh, 2400. So multiply this by 2400. So we can cross this out our k then or the proportionality constant would be 300 so if you multiply 150 times 2400 that would be 360,000. so then we can go ahead and say that our equation for this specific problem would be we plug this k into the equation here so it would come out w equals 360,000 divided by f so this is our equation. So what we do next is to determine the wavelength when the frequency is 400. So W is missing. What is W when the frequency is 400? So we go ahead and use this equation that we have right here. We plug it in. That would be W equals 3,000 or 360,000 divided by 400 so if we divide both of them our wavelength then is 900 meters so this is the um, wavelength when the frequency is 400 did you get the same answer as this yeah! good perfect if you find this video helpful hit like and subscribe for more math videos see ya